In our last lecture, we looked at how NGOs have various types of power. We also looked at their functions and the sort of dilemmas that they face. In this lecture, we're going to be looking at global civil society. What we see is that there's an uncritical acceptance of the concept of global civil society. In fact, in recent policy discussions on global civil society, it presupposes that it encompasses characteristics of civic activity and associationism that is non-governmental in nature. Global civil society inherently seeks to afford change in negation of the international system of states. We will entertain this argument that the concept of global civil society deserves closer critical examination before we can truly embrace and utilize a particular meta theory or criteria in the assessment of knowledge claims for this concept. We will first do so by first entertaining the idea that global civil society arose out of a language, culture, and definitions of civil society that was partially influenced by the discourse on the public-private sphere dualism. As such, a distinctive concept of global civil society has not been discovered in contemporary literature. Second, we can suggest that if a concept of global civil society did exist in present day, we will be guilty of cultural centrism. In essence, we will be employing an assimilating sort of strategy to interpret the concept of global civil society, and hence there's a sort of inherent lack of universal applicability. There is a general agreement that civil society is a space between the state and family. The notion of civil society is this idea that there is a part of society that has a life of its own that is distinctively different from the state, but moreover it is largely autonomous from the state. Civil society lies beyond the boundaries of the family and beyond the locality. It lies short of the state. Now the crucial element when we're looking at civil society is the autonomy civil society has from the state. When we look at prevailing civil society theory, it's been constantly re-emphasized that autonomy from the state is a crucial element. Moreover, this is a crucial element for non-democratic nations in their process of political transition. The public sphere has been a crucial sort of concept to understand civil society. The public sphere in the Habermasian sense has been utilized to express and examine social changes. For Habermas, the public sphere is a space between civil society and the state. It allows matters of general interest to be discussed. Now, using a public sphere approach appears to be less politicized, as it does not really suggest a deterministic view as what actually constitutes civil society. In other words, civil society in, in, in the sort of concept of leading to political system change. Now, this idea of civil society leading to uh, systemic political change comes from the collapse of communism in Eastern Europe in the late 1980s. In fact, when we look at nations such as Poland and Hungary, uh, the sort of civil society framework and civil society sort of theories have been attributed to transformative changes in these nations. This is not to suggest that the idea of public sphere has to be politicized. In a Habermasian conception, it's not necessarily as politicized as this idea of a systemic political change conception. Nevertheless, we must suggest that civil society is an old idea which in the past three decades has undergone a massive global revival. Yet the present day of experts cannot agree upon what actually constitutes civil society. Many authors looking at European history and thought argue that civil society acts as a negation to domestic governmental institutions. They point out civil society emerged in Enlightenment Europe where it was defined through its opposition of natural society or, or a state of nature. And this was really prevalent when we look at early modern contract theory, where figures such as Thomas Hobbes and John Locke play a prominent role in developing this project of civil society. 
As we mentioned in the previous slide, civil society seemingly was rediscovered and given a new contemporary relevance by dissident intellectuals in communist Eastern Europe in the 1980s, who engaged in this anti-totalitarian struggle. Here, civil society were non-governmental entities, civic associations, who attempted to encourage a certain brand of democratic rights and responsible government in order to afford changes in their society. As such, civil society was used as a vehicle for achieving a range of political and social goals. During this period, it had, it had opposed and sometimes brought about overthrow of oppressive regimes, as varied as Marcos Philippines or Abacha's Nigeria or Husak's Czechoslovakia. The idea then follows in the modern day context where civil society is absent repressive, tyrannical, and even genocidal forces supposedly have a freer hand. Where it is present, it supposedly constitutes a safeguard against war, exploitation. Notwithstanding this sort of centrism for a moment, arguably what we're gathering from the European traditions is civil society is civic activity or civic associationism acting in negation from government institutions to promote social and political change in the domestic sphere. Now, the roots of the concept of global civil society is much harder to distinguish. There is very little historical precedence to describe the idea of a global civil society. So generally speaking, we look to the historical foundations of civil society to articulate a normative and, and sort of prescriptive norms of global civil society. Typically, the majority of literature published these days on the topic, there's this sort of implicit understanding that the actors of global civil society are those individuals and groups within the international society such as international non-governmental organizations or transnational networks of associations that are mandated independently from the state. Global civil society seeks to fill a vacuum left by nation states in activity or lack of attention. The underlying residual effect of their activities is to strengthen the international and domestic public sphere at the expense of the nation state. Here in this idea, this concession of global civil society takes on the characteristics found in the European version of civil society. It involves civic associationism on a global scale, non-governmental organizations at an international scale, and more importantly, it seeks to afford change and negation of the international system of states. We should not, however, condemn global civil society as simply the European version of civil society in an, in an international context. If the mode of, of civil society involves negating domestic governmental institutions, global civil society lacks an international equivalent. There are no international bodies, the UN system of institutions withstanding, that the global civil society can negate. The point here is quite poignant. If and only if we assume the, that international civic associationism seeks to fill a void to negate an international system of nation states activities, then we're sadly looking in the wrong place. The international system of nation states do not have a universal transnational governmental institution that has a mandate to afford total political and social change in the global context. You really cannot negate something that does not exist. If and only if we are conceiving global civil society as a negation to international governmentalism, then, there, then, then this is not really global civil society in action, but rather domestic civil society working to inspire change within this mode of intergovernmentalism. Thus, strictly speaking, we must assume that the global and global civil society does not exist. Either way, we must fashion the concept of global civil society, if it exists at all, away from the language, culture, and definitions of domestic civil society. Now, if and only if we subscribe to the view that the concept of global civil society does exist, Charges of cultural centrism would immediately follow. 
problematic to the concept of global civil society is its acceptance by a community of experts from a distinct Eurocentric language, culture, and traditions, and a philosophical sort of understanding of what civil society means. The nature of Western liberal democratic nation states allows this explicit respect for the division between state and civil society. Henceforth, the global civil society idea can play a relatively greater role in Western liberal democratic nation states due to the traditions and acceptance of this division between state and civil society. However, can we induce that the concept of global civil society can operate functionally and exist in non-Western states where there isn't this sort of explicit division between state and civil society? This might suggest that in many parts of the non-Western world, the role that global civil society plays with the nation state will change in form and context especially in societies where there isn't this overarching need to influence the state by separating and negating from it, as found in Western liberal democratic nation states. There exist nation states presently who, through their respective political systems, um, are the sole bearers of most change. In other words, in these nations, significant change must occur from within the state's own ability. Take, for example, the People's Republic of China, where the idea of domestic self-society, much less a global one, can be a very contentious concept, especially in light of daily government operations and international outlook. Any attempts by a global self-society to work in China would have to be contained within the political state and not to empower or create a separate civil society sector. The reality of the matter is that civil society organizations in the context of China are dependent on the state, whether tacitly or overtly sanctioning their activities. If global civil society does exist, there are inherent universal claims attached to it, which we can suggest are a bit logically flawed. When viewing a conceptual framework that preaches a global sort of scope in its applicability, we often seek to understand that particular conceptual framework relative to our own environment. And that to understand the conceptual framework of global civil society is to interpret the concept, and the act of interpreting this sort of concept is to restate the phenomena in one's own terms. Let me put it in a different way. We've already shown that the accepted concept of global civil society came from European history and thought. The underlying operatives are civic activity and associationism that is non-governmental in nature and attempts to create change and negation of the international system of nation states. In short, the contemporary odds between concept of global civil society often involves a lack of comprehension with other social and political cultures. In this lecture, We've looked at this idea of global civil society and the fact that it requires greater scrutiny. Notably, there's an undue acceptance of the universality of understanding of global civil society. In our next lecture, we'll look more about the relationship between domestic civil society and the nation state.